This week we're going to Alaska for moose and doll sheep. But my first moose hunt was way back when with archery equipment. That's what really got me hooked onto him. And guess what? When he finally hits the ground is when the work starts. But it, you keep going back because you just can't get enough of it. What a fantastic animal to hunt with, rifle or bow. And my first doll sheep, oh, this is not my first one, but it's part of my obsession quest. A lot happened on that first one. It wore me out, and I said, if I'm ever going to go back and hunt sheep again, I'm going to get in shape. Well, this trip, I was in shape. So don't go away. Two great, exciting animals, two great, exciting adventures coming right up. Victor Chevrolet, Fast Pro Shops, and Alamositos Ranch present Bob Folkrod's Hunting Adventures. Seven continents, 80 species, a five-year quest in the making, high adventure, dangerous game, real-world training tips. This is Bob Fulgrod's Hunting Adventures. The doll sheep is a unique and beautiful trophy found in unique and beautiful wild country, mostly the mountains of Alaska above treeline. It's tough, demanding country, but the sheep thrive here. State biologists report a population of close to 70,000. Dolls can survive on the sparse grass, dwarf willow, and lichen in the high country, and the open habitat makes it easy for them to evade most predators. Redhead pro hunter Bob Folkrod has joined guide Charlie Culbertson and crew from Pioneer Outfitters to enjoy the splendor of the backcountry and to try to take a big ram. Just getting to sheep country is a challenge. First, it takes a bush plane flight, like those provided by 40 Mile Air out of Toke, Alaska. Then, it's off in a plane capable of short takeoffs and landings, the Super Cub most often referred to as the taxi of the backcountry. Oh, they call this a runway. A remote camp set up in the foothills, a short bush plane ride from Chisana, provides the hunters with a home away from home. Dull sheep are found in desolate looking high country that seems as if it couldn't possibly support them but the sheep do well here, so long as snows don't get too deep. Mature rams sport permanent horns that may take a decade to reach full curl. The largest rams weigh close to 300 pounds and stand over three feet tall. Dolls have soft but rough pads on the bottom of their hooves, and these allow them to traverse steep, rocky terrain with ease. The thick coat of hollow hairs makes them comfortable in a climate where the temperature is nearly always below freezing and frequently well below zero. Winter is coming and the days are getting colder. Hey Bob, coffee's on. Whew, she's a little chilly this morning. And there's nothing like a good cup of coffee and a warm breakfast to take the chill off the mountain air. Yeah, do a little climbing today. Easy, girl. From here, they'll set out on horseback to head up the mountains and into sheep habitat. Yeah, a little slow this morning, trucker. That a girl. The creeks are starting to ice over and present only a small obstacle to the sure-footed mountain horses. Bob Folkrot's Hunting Adventures is brought to you by these five sponsors, Vortex, and Buck Fever Synthetics. For the love of mud, gravel, and trail dust, 
For the love of farm roads, dirt roads, and no roads. For the love of hunting, fishing, and working the land. For the love of conservation, preservation, and restoration. Introducing Tracker Off-Road Vehicles, designed and built on American soil for kicking up American soil. Tracker Off-Road, built for love of country. When we face adversity, we find a way through it. It's about taking care of each other. It's the small parts that make a big difference. At Chevy, we promise to do ours. We're offering current Chevy owners OnStar Crisis Assist Services and complimentary Wi-Fi data. To help keep you on the road, the Chevy Certified Service Experts are here and ready to help if you require parts, maintenance, or repairs. You can even schedule your service appointments online. It's just our way of doing our part. After a short ride and a long walk uphill, they arrive at one of Charlie's favorite areas. All right, Bob, we sneak over the edge. Take a peek, see how far away they are. You guys just hang tight. Okay. Charlie moves in a little closer to get a look. With so little cover, hunters have to make use of the terrain to hide themselves from the sheep. The Dolls is the lone wild sheep in Alaska and is named after the scientific explorer William Healy Dahl, who was making expeditions to Alaska when it was still Russian territory. The Dahl is a thin horned sheep as opposed to a bighorn. Age is determined by counting the rings on their horns. Each year from April to September, a new growth ring is formed. Ewes carry horns also, but theirs are shorter and more slender than rams which can sport over 40 inches of horn. It is known that some rams have lived as long as 16 years and use reaching 19 years. Generally, a 12-year-old sheep is considered quite old. Dolls are one of the four species of sheep native to North America. Besides Alaska, the doll is found in the Northwest Territories, the Yukon, and a corner of British Columbia, where the other sheep live farther south. The foundation for North American wild sheep, a hunter's conservation group, has worked for over 30 years to conserve and improve stocks of these wild sheep. As a testament to their hard work, the group has raised millions of dollars for restocking, research, habitat improvement, and other management measures. Partly as a result, sheep have been restored to many areas where they've been absent for decades. This week's Conservation Angle has been brought to you by Wild Sheep Foundation. Okay, looks like it's still about 600 yards. We gotta cut it down that about half that. Yeah. Or a little better. Let's just keep working down through these rocks. There's another ledge down there we can get out to and maybe get a rest from. Okay. Bed it down right over there. Okay. okay. 
shooting distances can sometimes be a little long, and a flat shooting rifle like the 300 short mag can easily do the job. Just get set up for the shot, and when he gets up towards broadside, we can take him. The one closest to us, right? Closest to us. Okay. These sheep are certainly in no hurry to go anywhere or do anything. Bob will just have to wait them out. How far is he? Got him at 375. It's 375, Bob. 375. He's the closest one to us. When he gets up, turns broadside, just go ahead and let the air out of it. Now. If you'll just stand up and present a shot. Bob is patient. Now, a deep breath to relax and ease the crosshairs on him. It's a perfect hit. Good shot, Bob. All right. Oh, you poleaxed him. You He's pole down. Him. All He's right. Down. Boy, look at all those rams go boiling out of there. Woo. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I get that back in there. Get that, keep that unloaded. How's it feel? Oh, uh, that's your second doll. That was excellent. I'll tell Great you what. Great shot. Great shot, Bob. Stop. What a star. Yeah. Was that pretty down through there like that or what? Oh, yeah, it was perfect. We came way up above them, up to one of my little honey holes. Oh, I told you. Come around, find them every time in here. Now it's all downhill to a fine looking sheep. Sorry, this one took so long, but I'm here two days instead of one. This is a terrific sheep and one Bob can be proud of. Isn't that a hog? Oh, man, that's a hog. He's got to be over 38 on that side. I bet he's 14 on the bases. That's a toad, Bob. That is a toad. Over there. That's your 61st sheep, isn't it? Yeah, and your second. Uh, my second. Thank you, Dan. Transportation for all of Bob Folkrod's hunting adventures is provided by Victor Chevrolet. Check him out at VictorChevrolet.com. As the sum of each generation before it, the next generation Corvette stands alone. As the new standard of precision and performance, of engineering and technology, of everything that makes an icon an icon, and a Corvette a Corvette. Although Bob completed his obsession quest taking over 80 animals with a rifle, his first love has always been bow hunting. He's teamed up with longtime friend and archery coach Mike Price to help make you a better bow shot. Okay, today we're going to talk about stance. We're going to talk about the different attributes that are going to help you hunters be more successful in the woods and in tree stands especially. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to know how to gauge how we're standing or how to set up the stance. And the way we're gonna start is first we have to have a reference point to line up our stance or our feet too. If I have a line and I drew a line down from the bullseye to the floor and drew a line all the way back to where the shooter's gonna stand. When I was a kid, I was taught to stand so I was equal to the shooting line. So both toes were on the shooting line. If my heels, hips, and shoulders are aligned, because that's the most natural position as far as my stance. So if I aim the bow at the target, you're gonna see that my arm and string are pretty close. So if you put hunting clothes on me and I'm aiming at the middle of the target, I'm probably gonna make contact, even with the new string stops. I'm still gonna make contact, and contact isn't a good thing when you're shooting. It takes away from your accuracy. So if we set up, and we're gonna change our stance. The way we're gonna change our stance is not to move one foot, because what I'm looking for is from your instep, which is right here, across your toe, 
is gonna be on the line to the target. If I move one foot, I become tippy. I lose my solid base that my body is naturally standing on and is the most stable in. And I'm gonna move my whole base. Both feet have to move. My back foot usually becomes parallel to the target, so I have an open stance. My heels, my hips, and my shoulders are in alignment. Now, I point my bow at the target with my heels, hips, and shoulders aligned. I've got a lot more room between my string and my forearm. The other thing that it's gonna give me is clearance on my chest. Whether you're a lady or a hunting gentleman, again, we're gonna be wearing clothes. We're gonna be more bulky here, depending on the climate that you're gonna be hunting in. And we're gonna give you the best options for all climates. So if I pre-aim my bow and I come to full draw and my draw length is correct, my heels, hips, and shoulders are gonna line up. I've got a ton of clearance. If I was to stand in correctly, my chest moves closer to my strings, which is gonna make contact. I don't wanna make contact with the bow anywhere that I don't have to, because it's gonna take away from your accuracy. The other point that we're gonna make when you shoot an open stance, especially for hunting circumstances, is you have more rotational mobility. You can make a shot all the way around the tree stand that you're facing. So I think my deer is gonna come from over here. So I'm gonna change my stance. My tree stand is now facing this way because I think my deer is gonna be over here. And the deer comes in, the deer comes in, gets behind the tree. I present the bow to my target and I come to full draw and he moves very quickly. I wanna be able to move over here without moving my stance and execute the shot. Rotational mobility with an open stance, you're a little shorter in draw length but you're more compressed and it gives you the ability to not only shoot the deer over here, but all the way over here. And that should help you guys, especially in a tree stand, with your accuracy. This is Moose Country. The spectacular terrain of southeastern Alaska is a hunter's paradise, a dream come true. The giant Alaskan moose, by far the largest member of the deer family, reaches incredible size here. Mature bulls sometimes weigh over 1,500 pounds, and their massive palmated racks alone can weigh 65 to 80 pounds. This leads to the old joke about the best place to shoot a moose, right beside your pickup truck. However, there are no roads or pickup trucks in this country. Redhead pro hunter Bob Folkrod has traveled about 200 miles southeast of Fairbanks to come to Toke, Alaska, with a booming population of 935, to fly farther into the bush country with 40 Mile Air, one of Alaska's best known bush pilot operations. The flight to the main lodge shows plenty of great looking moose country below. Bob can't wait to set foot on the ground. And after a short time on the ground, they are off to the spike camp via a super cub. One of the best ways to get farther into the bush. These nimble little planes are very good at getting into tight spots. They can land in some very primitive and rough country. This will be home in the bush, smack in the middle of prime hunting country and miles and miles from civilization just the right place to be. There's plenty of game close by. In fact, on the way to the cook tent on his first morning in camp, Bob has an interesting encounter with some of the local fauna. Oh, there's a caribou. The young caribou has obviously never seen a human before, but he knows that there's usually another caribou at the bottom oh. of a rack like that. Oh. He just has to move in for a better look. Despite the cowbell serenade from the hobbled pack horses, he keeps coming closer yet. Coming a little bit closer. Oh, 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 oh. But oh. this weird dance is too much even for the most curious caribou. <laughs> Bob finally makes it to the cook tent where guy Charlie Culbertson has the coffee perkin and breakfast cooking. Heating up the tent on a frosty morning and a warm breakfast is the first item on the agenda before heading out. 
But there's a bit of an interruption before breakfast can be served. You guys may want to check this out. There's a moose outside. Really? Sure, there's a moose outside. That's a little moose. It's a little guy. No, look at that big one over there. The big one over there. Oh, oh that's boy. A oh, that's a nice bull. He's white, Charlie. Look at those palms. Yeah, that's a good moose. Let's get them horses saddled. Get okay. out of here. Breakfast can wait. This segment has been brought to you by the Victor Chevrolet Deal of the Week. Check them out at VictorChevrolet.com. A few years ago, Bob hunted hard up and down the beautiful and extremely rugged Wrangell Mountains for doll sheep. As with most of Alaska, the beauty and majesty of the country is as important as the hunt. After some serious climbing and some not so flat country, he was rewarded with a very nice doll. He's going down. Nice shot, Bob. Nice shot. You just got yourself a fine Alaskan doll sheep there, Bob. Because he enjoyed that hunt so much, he returned for another horseback doll hunt and harvested another nice ram. Like hunters everywhere, when Bob finds a great place to hunt, he returns time after time to take advantage of that. Since many of the hunts use horses for transportation into the backcountry, they have their own special appeal to them. While on a previous moose hunt, Bob managed to fill a grizzly tag during a sudden and unexpected snowstorm in the ever-changing Alaska weather. Oh man, I'll tell you what, that's exciting. One thing you can count on with Alaska weather is the fact that you can't count on it but it all adds to the stories and excitement you take home with you. Stories that last a lifetime. According to the IUCN's Red List of Threatened Species, moose categorize as a least concern because they're very widespread and extremely abundant despite fairly intense hunting worldwide. The 2014 Alaska Moose General Season Hunt Statistics reports hunter success rates ranked a mere 23%. Young moose are prey for bears, wolves, and cougars, and only about half live beyond six weeks, according to Alaska Department of Wildlife. Adult moose, however, have a much higher chance for survival. Vehicle moose collisions actually pose the greatest danger to the animal's survival. According to Alaska Department of Fish and Game, hundreds of moose are killed each year in moose versus vehicle accidents. This week's Conservation Angle has been brought to you by Wild Sheep Foundation. It doesn't take long to get close on the horses. The bull is less than a mile from camp. Should be right over the edge. He should be just down over the ridge, Charlie. Oh. All right, Bob, last time we saw him, he was right over this hill. We'll just sneak over the edge, see if we can't find him. He's probably bedded down those tall willows. Yeah, good deal. That's that little one, yeah, that's that little one. He's headed up here into the draw. 
The big one must still be right over there. I can't imagine he's looking for a fight. No, he's just gotta be over that edge right there. Yeah. There just over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> This is a very good moose. He's at 260. 260, Bob. When he's broadside, just aim dead on and let her eat. I'm on him. The shot is perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and before breakfast. <laughs> trying to outthaw everything. <laughs> trying to get everything unthawed. Eggs are froze. <laughs> Coffee water's froze up. <laughs> I was in the middle of cooking potatoes and we saw that bull. <sighs> Look at that. It looked out there and there were three cows on the hill. Oh, a little open. bull. Bob, you could have shot him a little closer to the tent. <laughs> you know, that's only about three quarters of a mile from the tent. <laughs> Breakfast is still on the table. Yeah. It just doesn't get any better no, now, no, huh, Dan? That's great. Good job. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Sorry you didn't get any breakfast yet, Bob. <laughs> look at that. Whew. Let's go look at him. Oh, man, that's a pretty moose. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'll poke him for good measures, but I know he's not going to go anyplace. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's a nice one. What a big animal. Whew. Look at him. There. Nice points on him. Good long palms. Lays out real wide. Oh. He's nice. Nice fingers on him. What a nice moose. Excellent. Well, we're getting ready for some pictures. Yeah. This giant goes home with Bob, providing meat for the winter and a trophy rack that will act as a lasting memory of the hunt. And the hunters head back to camp to finally sit down to that breakfast they left so long ago. After your successful hunt of a lifetime, contact Wes Good at KennedyStudio.com for the finest taxidermy in the business. Be sure to follow Bob and all his adventures at bobfolkrod.com slash TV and facebook.com slash bfolkrod. And don't forget to hit the like button.